you know, start diversifying everything in your life, whether it's your income, you know, don't just rely on one stream of income and make sure you've got your assets distributed um, internationally as much as possible, just so you don't give one country, one government, all of the power over you, your assets, your business, your family. The more you get to pick and choose from other places, the more options and possibilities you will be able to secure um, overseas. I have two extremely important questions for you. Number one, how much of your hard-earned money are you paying in taxes? And number two, what are you doing with the freedoms that you have? If you're not satisfied with either of those answers, you're going to find so much value in this video because I have brought here today a very special guest, Kathy DiPaolo. You might also know her as the founder of Wondrous Wealth and Kathy helps entrepreneurs, digital nomads, expats, anyone who makes money online discover amazing global opportunities for you to better set up your business structure as well as reduce your tax obligations all legally, not to mention all of the personal benefits and lifestyle and financial advantages and so on. So I'm super excited to have her here today. And if you're new here in the channel, welcome. My name is Ali Hobart. My husband Sumner and I are Amazon sellers and we have all kinds of businesses, which is what we document here on the channel. But with that, we have the privilege to travel the world while we make money. And that comes with so many advantages. And that is why I wanted to bring Kathy here today. I have already mentioned here in the channel before, and I've gotten feedback from some of you saying that you now follow her, that you are applying a lot of the content that she shares and taking advantage of all of that. So very excited. And without further ado, let's get to it. Kathy, welcome to the channel. We're so excited to have you joining us here today. So why don't you give us an introduction about yourself, a little bit of your background and where you're joining us from today? Yes, thank you so much for having me and for spreading the word. So right now I'm joining in from Bali and I have been traveling the world myself. I've been a digital nomad for almost five years. Wow and been all over the world from, you know, all of Europe, lots of Asia, uh, parts of Africa, Central and South America. And it's been quite the journey. In my previous life, I used to be a tax lawyer and that's how I kind of got started with this whole global tax strategy solutions that are available to most of us. And people who are also nomads, who are also travelers, who I've met on the road, started coming to me, you know, and asking me about the taxes that I knew. And that's how I found it. Wondrous Wealth really it was like a demand in the market where people didn't know what to do with their tax situation as travelers, as digital nomads. And I created solutions Definitely, for them, yeah. um, you know, that were that are legal of how they can be set up, where they should be paying taxes. And that has expanded now into more offerings such as, you know, doing their whole business structures, doing their bank accounts set up, second residencies where there is a second residency needed or even second citizenships. So that's a little bit of what I do. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, we started Amazon while we had full time jobs. And then we started seeing the opportunities and the flexibility of making money online. So because we started as a side business, we established our company in the U.S. And it was only after a longer vacation that we were, that we realized, OK, why are we in the U.S.? <laughs> like, I mean, for us, it's more expensive than other parts that we wanted to visit. And I mean, we had that thirst for adventure, for travel. So Thankfully, we had this income stream that allowed allowed us to travel full time. But even if we weren't traveling full time, like probably the majority of our subscribers, I think a lot of Amazon sellers do start their do start selling on Amazon 
almost as a test and then later on need to figure out what are the best strategies. But before we dive into Amazon and all tech strategies for global citizens, I'm curious to know, so you said you were a tax lawyer before. So what came first for you to become a tax, a global tax strategy? Um, you started traveling more and then became interested about that topic for yourself or was it from clients? Like, what was your like wake up moment? Yeah, so I think it even started back when I was a lawyer and I had clients who had a bit of a tax residency issue where they didn't know where they had to pay taxes because they were having quite a mobile life. Um, I remember they were working on yachts most of the year and a lot of those people who are in the yacht industry, they are actually hired by some mm. sort of agencies and the agencies always, you know, advertise saying you don't have to pay taxes um, on the income that you make because you're on international water or you're working yeah. in the Caribbean or whatnot. So our job as in when I was back in the firm was to look into is that actually true? Like, do they need to pay somewhere taxes because the point came, you know, where they wanted to purchase property or they wanted to make some investments but didn't even know um, what sort of tax returns they had to show from the past. And that's when I really started kicking in that, hang on, we can actually be out there somewhere in a Caribbean island, you know, living the dream on a yacht and not be paying any taxes at all. And that's when I really became interested in that tax residency concept. And as I progressed, I even, you know, started hearing from people who were working for mm -hmm. tax firms overseas in Dubai and all of their salary was tax free. And here I was, you know, a junior a lawyer having to pay already so much in taxes yeah. and I was like how is it possible that people who are living somewhere else they don't have to pay any taxes and here I am having to pay you know a significant amount of taxes so that's when I kind of started questioning the whole system yeah, yeah. I know it's like a matrix moment like for yeah. us it wasn't about tax strategies it was about the geo arbitrage, you know, like if you read the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss and it was funny, it was during this long vacation that I mentioned at the end of 2018, when we were already selling on Amazon and Sumner also had another marketing business, but we we're on this amazing trip. We were listening to this audiobook together on the plane and then we're like, mm -hmm oh my gosh, what are we doing? Like, especially because we're not winter people. We were living in Ohio at the time and it was the in the middle of the winter. So we're like, we're done with this life. Um, and we love traveling. Like we've traveled as much as we could before then. And then with the freedom from having an online business, it really made it happen. Um, so I've already mentioned a few times about Amazon FBA, which is the main model for our business, but we started to expand and share our insights here on the channel about all kinds of e-commerce and passive income. But in the Amazon FBA community, there's a mix of people. We have many people here on the channel that are Americans, as well as internationals, like non-US citizens. A lot of people selling on Amazon US. So in general, as um, I know you have some clients who are Amazon FBA sellers. So just open our minds a little bit. Like what are some global tax strategies, opportunities that Amazon sellers could be taking advantage of? Yeah, I think let's first look at the global tax strategies and when that really becomes important to talk about. So most of my clients are actually people who kind of like you discovered, you know, that they can make an income online yeah. from anywhere, um, such as maybe an income from Amazon. I do also have, in fact, a lot of solopreneurs who are my clients, who are, you know, coaches, consultants. Um, but that's the starting point. And then they realize they can do this from anywhere. So they can potentially move abroad to tax-free places. And that is where global tax strategies really start to kick in and where you can also make maximize sort of your tax savings and um, you know you could be running your 
Amazon business with an entity set up somewhere, let's talk about the biggest market in the US, but you yourself personally could be located in a tax-free country such as Dubai, um, you know, which is the case for some people. You've got other tax-free places, uh, which could potentially be territorial tax places such as Panama. Basically, it just means they don't tax all of your income, but only whatever is made within um, the country, within the borders of the country. Or you also have now many um, countries that give you uh, special tax schemes, such as Portugal, for example, that has a special tax regime for 10 years. So that's usually how I help my clients um, maximize their tax savings by really moving abroad and establishing themselves in a lower tax country. However, there are also tax opportunities there if you structure things correctly, if you don't have the opportunity to move abroad, because, you know, I understand not everybody's ready yeah. or willing to pack their suitcases and to move abroad forever. Um, in those cases, I would usually say to really work together closely with a good tax accountant, mm -hmm. because the chances are that most people who come to me, they're usually from Western countries, developing countries, and those countries usually have really strict tax rules. So, you know, they won't just let you go into another country and set up another uh, business over there and just pay zero taxes, but still be living in their country and, you know, take advantage of their system, of their social security uh, system. So you really need to be careful with the structures that you set yeah. up in that case if you don't have the flexibility of moving abroad. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually one of my questions. Like, yes, we have the flexibility of moving abroad, but what if we don't want to move? And like, I'm not a U.S. citizen, but I do know that the U.S. is one of the most strict countries in terms of taxes because it doesn't matter where you live. As long as you're a U.S. citizen, you need to pay taxes. Correct. Like even if you're somewhere else. Yeah, that is correct. All year and round. That was also, you know, one of my big realization when I started looking into this whole tax system was like, hang on. So most majority of people that live in a countries outside of the US are actually able to move their tax residency quite easily we and then can are still able to keep their passports you know of as a strong country and don't even have to pay taxes anymore there and that just kind of blew my mind that that's even an option um, whereas you know US citizens or US tax residents even if you're a US green card holder they don't have that option they will have to keep filing in the US even if they move abroad so that's definitely uh, yeah that was one of my realizations as well because I'm Brazilian so I don't have to pay taxes taxes in Brazil as long as I'm not living there or making money there. So I'm thankful I get to keep my passport. But yeah, by being a green card holder or Sumner being a citizen, we do have to pay taxes in the US. But mm -hmm. as you mentioned, there are still tax strategies that you can take advantage of even for example if you're american even if you already established your business in the u.s but for this case would you advise them to look for a really good cpa correct so yeah usually three things get together with a really great tax accountant locally i um, always happy for people to reach out to me. Usually I'm available through Instagram, wanderers.wealth, if you need a recommendation of a good one. And then second thing is being in the right business structure, making sure that you are set up in the most tax efficient way because being in the right business structure will also determine a lot of times what sort of tax rate you will be taxed at. The and the third thing is not staying too long as a self-employed person because the biggest uh, mistake I see people make is that they usually start yeah. out, you know, a new site hustle or something like that. And they simply do it and set up an Amazon seller account as an individual because they don't have anything else or whatever as a self-employed person. And then yeah. they stay too long with that sort of 
business entity set up. Well, it's more like, you know, your, your legal name, so to speak. And the reason why you don't want to be too long as a self-employed person or be running your business as a self-employed person is because the tax rate of a self-employed person can go up really high real quick because you're basically being taxed um, on the personal income tax rate. As opposed to if you were to switch it to a business entity such as in the US, it would be a US LLC or a S Corp. In that case, you can lower down your tax rates because business tax rates are usually lower than personal tax rates. And you can deduct more expenses. You can get easier insurances for your business and that sort of stuff. And you are more protected as well, yeah, right? Exactly. Like financially. Yeah. So we also have many Amazon sellers who are international, non-US citizens, who want to sell in the biggest marketplace of Amazon, which is the US. So in that case, I'm assuming, especially if maybe you're not from a Western country, you have a lot more opportunities in terms of tax strategy. Like, would you recommend they set up a business structure in the US? Yeah, so it depends a bit on the individual's case. So first of all, it depends on where you are residing. Like, you know, if you are a resident of a higher tax country, such as, let's just throw it out there, um, Australia, Canada, um, you want to be careful with establishing a business outside of your country that you're residing in just because you add a little bit of more complexity to your case and correct correct me if i'm wrong but i believe that even you know people that are living in canada they can still set up they can still have a canadian company and then sell into the u.s market um yeah yeah there's a big list of countries that you're able to yeah. do that just a handful of countries that you're not able to sell on Amazon US and I'll make sure to leave in the description below the link with the list of countries but yes it's the majority yeah. of countries from which you're able to sell on Amazon US without establishing your business in the US. Yeah so you know there is that opportunity you can actually sell into the US market even with your local company structure from back home. Um, however what I've heard in practice is that a lot of times people will pay a lot of fees um, banking fees, that sort of thing yeah. that they can't actually get insurances um, as a seller on Amazon if they don't have a US entity. So practicality wise, it might actually make more sense for you to then set up a US entity if you're going to really expand into that US market. In that case, also make sure you work together really closely with an accountant in your home country, just because if you go and set up that US entity, yes, you might be able you know, to become super successful and profitable over there, but you want to make sure that you know how that business that you've set up overseas is that tax back in your home country. And usually the um, companies that people, foreigners set up in the US is usually a US LLC. And they are... Um, tax transparent entities, which means that they don't attract any corporate taxes in the US. But they don't attract any um, taxes in the US. They only attract taxes where you personally are a resident of. Mm -hmm. So that's where it gets a little complicated, but also where it could get super advantage, a super big advantage for people who are actually flexible and have that freedom to move abroad and move to somewhere that doesn't necessarily have a high tax, because in that case, that US LLC could potentially have a zero tax rate. You know, if someone in Dubai has a US LLC set up, then that US LLC's income could potentially be zero tax, um, as opposed to someone who's running it from Australia. You see the difference? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that brings me to my next question. So 
We covered a little of the limitations, but also the opportunities. If you can't really move, but if you can move, not only if you can, but if you want to move and take advantage of this amazing lifestyle that is to be able to work while you're traveling the world. Um, so what would you say are the biggest opportunities today? Like maybe off the top of your head, like some countries that offer really good opportunities for people like Amazon sellers, and that not only is a great country to live, but also has these tax advantages. Yes. Yeah, so usually we would always be looking at um, countries that are tax free. So, you know, at the top of the list is always Dubai, um, especially with all this online world going on. It seems that a lot of these new rich people are definitely liking to set up a base in Dubai. You know, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be there the whole year. That's another thing as well. Um, but definitely a good solution for people. Uh, then, as I mentioned before, territorial tax countries such as Panama, territorial tax system just simply means that they don't tax anything that comes from outside of their countries, outside of their territory. They only tax what is made within their territory. So if you have a U.S. company, um, then that is not considered to be, you know, income made from Panama, obviously. And, 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 and if I'm not mistaken, I think Panama is super friendly for U.S. citizens, yeah. right? I mean, they use the U.S. dollar, I think. Yeah, we've had Amazon sellers tell us that they were thinking about moving to Panama for the place, which is amazing, but also for the tax advantages. Exactly, yeah. And then you have um, the newer, I would say, tax incentive places that are really wanting, you know, to attract more foreigners and in exchange they're giving out um tax friendlier rates to people who are moving there such as Portugal where you can get a reduced rate if you fulfill certain requirements that is on the personal income um, tax side mm -hmm. and then obviously you always want to look as well on the business income tax side mm -hmm. in yeah. case you are running like a local company and you are selling through that company as well yeah, that's great. So there are so many opportunities. And something you mentioned is that you can establish your business there, but you don't even have to live there full time, right? Like Dubai, for example. So I'm sure you work on a case by case basis, but let's say someone comes to you and they're like, I want to take advantage of all these tax strategies, but I don't really want to move to just any country. Like I have my taste. I kind of like the West or the European lifestyle or this or that, like things that usually come with a heavier tax burden. But are you able to find tax strategies for them to be able to live that lifestyle? And actually a double question. Can you actually be traveling full time, traveling the world full time, like going pa -pa 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 -pa, several places like we do? Um, and have a better business structure somewhere else where you pay minimum taxes, if not like zero from a place like Dubai, maybe? Yeah, yeah, um, good question. So the first one, yes, definitely. Uh, most of the time, actually, when I design my strategies, it's because people aren't quite sure yet where they want to move to. So I present them with different options based on their preferences. So, you know, when people just come to me and they're like, where should I move to? I'm like, you need to be a bit more precise. What sort of weather do you like? What sort of culture do you like? Um, you know, because not everybody's going to like yeah. Dubai and not everybody's going to like Panama. So I need to know a little bit more about your yeah. vision, your lifestyle, your future goals, the sort of business that you run, the sort of income as well that you're producing. Because, you know, if you, let's say you have an Amazon store, but you've also got got a major investment portfolio that means we need to look at capital gains taxes as well that might impact where you mm -hmm. what would be best for you 
Um, and then on the other side, so yes, you don't actually need to necessarily be living full time in one place in order to have a beneficial tax strategy. Um, there is a general rule out there. It's, you know, a very general rule. It's called the 183 day rule, which basically says if you stay for 183 day, which is six months, then you are considered to be a tax resident of that country. And that's kind of the generic mm -hmm. um, thing to keep in mind. However, every country is a bit different and every situation is different depending on what sort of ties you've already got with your different countries that you're linked to, you know, whether you've got a passport, whether you've got a residency somewhere, bank accounts somewhere, businesses somewhere. So we look at all those different things to see, okay, how long do you actually need to be there? What do you need to have there? Um, very much a case by case basis. For those people that are super nomadic, um, that's a big struggle for them, you know, to decide where to set up a home base. And uh, the reality yeah. is that some of my clients um, are actually some uh, tax residents of nowhere. So that is usually the case for people who are, for example, from certain uh, European countries, Germany, for example, Switzerland, Austrians are quite easily able to be tax residents of nowhere. Not so easy for those uh, citizens that come from the Commonwealth. So my Australians, Canadians, very hard. So for those people, it's very necessary actually to choose a place and home base and set up a residency somewhere. Um, but yeah, that's the general thing of those that want to be nomadic and could be potentially tax residents of nowhere, it is possible to run a business as a tax resident of nowhere. Although for a long-term strategy, I never really recommend it. Um, but there are many travelers and nomads out there that have been doing it for a while. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And to be honest, like being digital nomads ourselves, I don't know that many people who would want to be on the road full time for a long, long time, like without a home base. Like as much as we love our life of adventure, living out of a suitcase is not something many, including us, would love forever. You do miss having a blender or your own mattress. So having a home base like where you can establish your business and have these advantages is definitely attracted to attractive to us and many other Amazon sellers as well. Not to mention the opportunity to have second residencies and citizenships. Yeah, no, that's right. Um, especially for US citizens, they do have a really hard time actually to sometimes open up accounts abroad. Mm -hmm. So bank accounts, usual traditional bank accounts, even like fintech accounts, and typically also with crypto trading platforms. You, so you will always see whenever, even if you have to create a profile online and go through a KYC um, process, they will ask you, are you a US citizen? Mm -hmm. And that's because US citizens usually just have a much higher compliance. And a lot of times, even banks, you know, like, banks overseas or whatnot, if you are a US citizen, they won't um, actually let you open accounts or they're very hesitant to open mm. up accounts because they know it's going to cost them a lot more in terms of bureaucracy and keeping you compliant mm -hmm. um, against the IRS in the US. Um, so a good strategy then for US citizens is to, you know, get a second residency or get a second passport in another country. So you yeah. do have that option to potentially open up a bank account, a crypto account overseas with another um, citizenship, with another residency. Yeah, absolutely. And with crypto alone, I know that the US and so many other countries are making it super hard for citizens to own and withdraw crypto, which is crazy. So I know there are some countries who are much more friendly to crypto and other types of investments when you are a resident, right? Um, nowadays, I see so many advantages of having second passports or residencies. Yeah, for sure. No, for 
Me, I always talk about not putting all of your eggs in one basket. And it's basically just another way to say, you know, yes. start diversifying everything in your life, whether it's your income, you know, don't just rely on one stream of income and um, make sure you've got your assets distributed um, internationally as much as possible, just so you don't give one country, one government, all of the power over you, your assets, your business, your family. Yeah. The more you get to pick and choose from other places, the more options and possibilities you will be able to secure um, overseas. And that goes back to the fact that, you know, you actually, especially in this day and age, I think it's so much more easier to access this diversification because we get to incorporate a U.S. Yeah. company from the comfort of your couch, even if you are in Panama or in Dubai. You get to open up online banks from the comfort of your couch, even if you're not even close to that country. You can even submit your applications for residency from wherever you are. Yes, you might have to travel to then, you know, go to the migration office or whatnot if you're um, pho photography, if your fingerprints, whatnot. But a lot of times you can do a lot of the processes online from the comfort of your couch, wherever you are from. So I kind of think it's also our responsibility to start looking at those options that are out there, to start educating ourselves around them and looking yes. at what more doors can I open if I secure my second citizenship that I've got access to. And specifically, a lot of um, Central South American people, you know, they've got ancestors that came from somewhere else. And they might potentially have access to a European passport that they're sitting on. And they might be able to get another second residency elsewhere to just have in the back of their pocket because you never know what's going to happen, you know. And one of the biggest wake-ups, yeah. I think, was also Brexit where UK citizens always thought, you know, they can travel to Europe whenever they want. And now they, you know, need to basically apply for visas like Chinese citizens need to apply for visas to come to Europe. So things change, politics, whatever the financial climate might change. And you just never know when you might actually benefit from a second citizenship that you could have applied for a while back or from a second residency here. Yeah. Yes, yes, I totally agree. And I definitely feel a sense of urgency, like beyond saving money on taxes to get our foundation right, not only from a business structure standpoint, but also lifestyle and your future. And as you mentioned, like I've personally been putting off looking into a Portuguese by the Sen citizenship that I'm entitled to. And now there's like rumors that they might change or the law might change and they might get rid of it. But um, so, yeah, there is a sense of urgency. And as you said, the responsibility that I definitely need to look into. But with all that being said, what are some resources that you would recommend if someone wants to start their global tax strategy today um, including yours, of course, which I've personally consumed and recommend 100%. I would probably first binge watch my channels. <laughs> I have a lot of free content out there, as you said, blog posts about all of these different topics. Um, and then I would also probably start talking to um, accountants first for the tax side of things of, you know, how you can optimize yourself, how you can optimize your business structure, your assets that you're holding to get more protection, especially if you don't have the flexibility to move abroad or you don't want to move abroad, make sure that, you know, you've got protection around you. And then secondly, I would also be looking in this day and age, I think it's so easy to kind of change your environment, especially with social media, podcasts, Facebook groups. Start looking into individuals who are already living this really global lifestyle, you know, like all these global citizens who are super diversified, who talk about these topics, who talk about and um, listen podcasts on it, you know, listen to YouTube, watch YouTube videos on it and start 
immersing yourself more with those solutions that are out there. Because even me, you know, I talk constantly about these solutions and it's solutions sometimes. Um, just recently, I was talking about the new Spanish digital nomad visa that gives people, non-European citizens, the opportunity to stay three years long in Europe, in Spain, you know, and some people would never know about those solutions unless they're presented with them. So the more you surround yourself with those sort of individuals who talk about yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think that applies to all areas of business and life in general, like surround yourself with and consume content from people who are currently in a place that you want to go. Yeah, but you're right. It always pays off to set things in place as a preventative measure, as opposed to try to figure these things out when the need arises, uh, because a lot of times it's too late. Um, like I know some of the second citizenships and residencies programs are closing off. As I mentioned, laws are changing and so on. Um, and one thing, um, that no one wants to think about is that governments can really impose insane restrictions and laws. And if you don't have another choice, like another passport, for example, you can't do yeah. anything but comply. Me too. I don't really like to think about it as fear mongering, you know, like I don't want to have to think about a second COVID or a second closure of borders. But what I like to think about is yeah. how can I secure more opportunities and possibilities for myself, for my loved ones, for my wealth growth globally, yes. you know, because I am, you know, very much a third culture kid who grew up super internationally. So for me to be able to move around globally, I've got, you know, family all over the world is super important. So how can I make sure that I secure that sort of freedom of movement to be able to choose be location independent and yeah. without anyone restricting on that opportunity that I have? And also you think about it, the things that you value for me, it's definitely freedom. You know, it's financial freedom, it's personal freedom it's time freedom um you want to somehow protect those yeah. things because if you think about it the things that we really value such as like our health we take out health insurance and um, some of us even take out pet insurance you know we love our pets <laughs> we love our houses we take out house insurances but there's no real insurance yeah. to take out for things that are completely out of your control like a financial global crisis like um outrageous tax like you know banking collapses yeah. so those sort of things like a second residency, second citizenship, making sure you get access to the lowest tax possible are in your, are they, you can actually grab them and they're there for you to be grabbed. And the thing that you said, we don't know how much longer they will be available. So make sure you secure them while you can. So you've actually got that option available. Yeah, 100% I agree. Like you said, Sumner and I have a lot of businesses. We have a lot of plans for the future, but our freedom and our time, that's the most precious to us, like way more than money. Um, and yeah, we don't know how long, we, we can't predict the future. So I definitely think that is one of the things that it is our responsibility to do. Um, and okay, I want to say, to share that I have personally consumed your content through your blog posts and your free masterclass, and it's been so helpful that it made me want to reach out to you to bring this value to the community and the Amazon space. So could you share one of your favorite client success stories? I don't know if you can get into numbers or anything, but just in general, how you've been able to help them. Oh, yeah, thank you. There are so many, honestly. Um, I feel so privileged to work together with the individuals that I get to work together. And the expansion that we're able to create for them is amazing. Um, starting with the tax bill, you know, it's very common for me to slash down their tax bill to a third of what they were paying before. And, you know, even I've made people completely tax free, you know, who are living their best lives completely tax-free when they were paying before wow. close to six figures it's legal it's possible it's obtainable 
Um, it's sometimes a bit harder for U.S. citizens, but my U.S. citizens as well, I've been able to, you know, reduce their tax rate down to a third of what they were paying before. But one case in particular that I've just recently had that was like the perfect example of a complete expansion of their global wealth that we were able to do. She came to me to reduce her tax rate because she had quite a nomadic life, was traveling mm. around a lot, hadn't filed her taxes in the last three years or so. I've seen it all, you know, there's no shame when you come to me. Where was she from? Uh, Canada. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Canada, yeah. And then in the end, yeah, we did the tax bit, but not only that, when I got to talk to her on a one-on-one -on -one basis, I was able to, you know, like figure out, okay, where her family was from, her business activities and everything. And we figured out she was actually eligible to um, get a UK citizenship. Mm -hmm. So we've secured her UK citizenship. We also figured out that she was an accidental American, meaning that oh. you know, she was ac accidentally born, well, accidentally born, <laughs> like just meaning... Her yeah. parents were on holiday, yeah, yeah, and she was born sort of in uh, America at that time. So automatically you become a U.S. tax uh, citizen. So still in the process of... Yeah, citizenship yeah, by birth. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So we're still in the process to renounce her U.S. Um, citizenship. That's also an option for those of you that don't know. Um, just because, you know, she, she never really chose to live in the U.S. doesn't doesn't see herself ever living there and whatnot um, and her business structure we set up a completely new business structure where she's running her business activities super um, tax efficient from so it's like from this tiny thing that was just like you know her personal taxes came all of this like new second residency and we've secured another residency in Europe came the second citizenship through ancestry that she was eligible for and even a uh, citizenship renunciation so wow yeah. Wow, so cool, so cool. You definitely got me motivated again to get started on that and um, as I mentioned here, Kathy works one on one with clients. she also has a tons tons of freebies on her website. she has a free master class and an online course as well. So Kathy, honestly, thank you so much for coming today and sharing your knowledge and valuable insights with us. Now um, tell everyone where they can find you and how they can reach out to you. No, thank you so much for having me. really enjoyed this conversation and if anyone out there feels like they want to chat some more, they need some more support, they want to dive deeper into their tax situation, how they should set up you know, their Amazon business, please feel free to reach out. Um, I am always happy to have a bit of a chat and then direct you in the right direction. Even if I can't personally help you or, or if I feel like you know you would be better off talking to your local accountants, if you need any recommendations, please reach out and happy to point you in the right direction. Amazing. Thank you. I'll make sure to leave all of her links in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to watch this playlist right here where we share all kinds of tips and strategies for you to improve your life and business. As always, thank you so much for watching. And again, Kathy, thank you for joining us. Thank you.